Hey guys, welcome back to Mac Merlin, the show where all of you get to join me on all my amazing keyboard adventures. So a few weeks ago, I went on a vintage keyboard hunt where I visited a bunch of thrift stores, electronic stores, you name it, and I was lucky enough to finish my hunt finding one mechanical keyboard. That mechanical keyboard was the Cherry G84. I definitely knew what it was as soon as I saw it. The reason being is because I have two other Cherry G84s. The G84 uses different switches. It actually uses Cherry ML. ML switches are low profile and they're also a lot smaller and PCB mount only. They are only available in tactile format and they have an actuation force of 45 centinewtons. So let's talk about this keyboard I found. It's got a 75% form factor. It's got arrow keys, which I really, really like. And let's see, what else can we say about it? It may be 75%, but if you compare it to a 60% keyboard, it actually still is a lot smaller. In fact, when you type on it, it's a little bit cramped. Anyway, this particular keyboard has ABS keycaps, and from the looks of it, the legends are all pad printed. If you turn it around, you'll see that the module number is a G84-4100 LCMUS. And yeah, that definitely means pad printed ABS keycaps with USB. So how do these even feel? Well, from my experience with the other keyboards, they feel really tactile, which I'm a big fan of. I really like using them. Unfortunately, when you're typing on them and you don't hit the key right in the middle, they tend to kind of, what you call it, hang a bit. So it's almost as if you didn't press it. Given a week's worth of time, you can get used to any keyboard. So you should be totally fine with that. The other keyboards that I have are a black one and a gray one. The black one is also pad printed ABS, but I really like the keycaps on this one. Um, as you can see, both of them have these really tiny space bars. So at first it was a problem for me, but then I started moving my thumb closer to the B key and that seemed to work. The black keycap has a model number of, of G84, 4100 PRMGB. I think it looks really, really nice. I really like the Legends. I like them much, much better than the white one that I found. My favorite G84, however, is the gray one that I found. This one is unique. It's got a model number of G84 4101 SPAUS. So those last letters are key. It means that it's die sub and PBT. And you can defi definitely tell. An another reason why I like this particular keyboard is because it's got a larger space bar. I don't have to worry about hitting the alt key. I don't have to worry about hitting any other key. So this is actually the one I use for work whenever I feel like using a G84 keyboard. It's nice and handy. The only thing I wish it would have is actually a USB cable. You can totally see the difference if you take a DSA keycap and compare it with one of the ML switch keycaps. Placing the ML on top of the DSA back to back, you can see that it's just a tiny smidgen smaller than the DSA, but that's enough to make all the difference. Now we've got keycaps from all three ML boards and I'm sure you can tell which one is the PBT die sub. Anyway, have any of you guys out there tried these G84 keyboards? If so, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Do any of you use them as a daily driver? And if so, which G84 variant do you like? Till next time guys.